Hi friends, my name is Dr. Saf and welcome back to my channel. Acute kidney injury which is previously known as acute renal failure is defined as the sudden deterioration of kidney functions which occur in over 7 days. About 5 in 10 patients admitted to ICU develop acute kidney injury. In this video, we will learn the epidemiology, risk factors, etiology and pathophysiology of AKI. Now, convincing evidence indicates that the incidence of AKI is rapidly increasing, particularly among hospitalized patients with acute illness. The reported incidence of AKI in ICU varies and is mostly dependent upon several factors including the definition used, the case mix of patients or the location of patients. For example, if the patient is surgical, the incidence of AKI will be different. A recent meta-analysis of 92 studies included data from developing and developed countries and found that AKI incidence was 39.3% in developed countries and 35.1% in developing countries which was lower than developed countries. What are the main risk factors which contribute or which precipitate the development of AKI in a critically ill patient. These risk factors may be of many types. Majorly there are of two types, non-modifiable and modifiable. The main non-modifiable risk factors are old age, male sex, pre-existing CKD, hypertension, diabetes mellitus, heart failure, etc. On the other hand, there are few risk factors which can be modified and hence AKI is completely preventable if we could take care of such factors like anemia, sepsis, trauma, surgery, fluid retention or fluid overload, uh, nephrotoxic agents exposure such as antibiotics or contrast media used in radiological investigations. So these risk factors could be modifiable or at least preventable. What is the exactitude of pathogenesis of AKI? Well, no one knows it perfectly. However, the central mechanism involves the renal hypoperfusion. Kidneys receive up to 25% of cardiac output and thus any failure of the systemic circulation or isolated failure of intrarenal hemodynamics can have profound impact on the renal perfusion which is a central mechanism. But this may not be the sole mechanism of AKI. There are various other factors. Traditionally, the etiologies of renal injury have been categorized into three pre-renal, renal and post-renal types. Pre-renal AKI is characterized by a decrease in GFR due to decrease in renal perfusion pressure without damage to the renal parenchyma. So that's pre-renal. Now what are the causes of pre-renal AKI? Obviously the hypovolemia resulting from conditions such as hemorrhage or excessive vomiting or excessive diarrhea and third spacing, poor oral intake, burns, acute pancreatitis, or excessive diuretic use, all these could lead to dehydration. Then the causes of impaired cardiac output resulting from congestive heart failure or decreased cardiac output states like uh, pericardial tamponade or severe pulmonary hypertension or pulmonary embolism, all could lead to uh, a decrease in the renal perfusion and can cause uh, pre-renal AKI. Then even sepsis and vasodilator medications, okay, autonomic neuropathy or anaphylactic shock, even renal vasoconstrictions due to vasopressors can lead to hypoperfusion of kidney. So there are a multitude of causes. Now what are the intrarenal causes of AKI? So it is because of damage to one or many of you know parenchymal structures which is present in the renal parenchyma like uh, there are four structures the tubules the glomeruli the interstitium and the intrarenal vasculature so damage to tubule is more common which is called acute tubular necrosis which is of two types ischemic resulting from a severe uh, or protracted decrease in the renal perfusion or, or hypoxic kidneys and it could be nephrotoxic or toxic ATN which results from a variety of exogenous compounds exposure like 
or uh, antibiotics, uh, aminoglycosides, amphotericin B, cisplatin, anti-cancer drug or radiocontrast media. And there are some endogenous compounds which could be uh, tubular toxic like hemoglobin in hemolysis or myoglobin in rhabdomyolysis toxic to the kidneys. AKI from glomerular damage also occurs, you know, especially in severe cases of uh, rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis. AKI from interstitial damage can result from acute interstitial nephritis due to variety of uh, medications. Okay, one such medication I could give example of variety of antibiotics like penicillin, cephalosporin, sulfonamides and even sometimes infection can cause the interstitial nephritis. Now we would talk about the vasculature, the AKI from vascular damage which occurs because of injury to intrarenal vessels which decreases the renal perfusion selectively and diminishes the GFR. The causes of vascular injury include the malignant hypertension, which is quite common cause, or atherosclerosis, or preeclampsia, eclampsia syndrome in obstetric CKI, or hemolytic uremic syndrome. All these are vasculitic syndrome, which could lead to the development of, you know, uh, intrarenal um, vascular damage. So there are post renal causes of AKI which are characterized by the acute obstruction to the urinary flow. Urinary tract obstruction increases the intratubular pressure and thus decreases the GFR. Okay, so that's the pathophysiology. Obstruction of the urinary tract at any level obstruction can occur and which could lead to the post renal AKI. For example, um, a very common cause is the urethral stones or in men, uh, benign uh, hyperplasia of prostate okay gynecological cancers especially the cervical cancer in women are common causes of post-renal tubular obstruction due to precipitation of various substances in the urine uh, uh, like acyclovir or indenavir can lead to sometimes there are hydrogenic causes in icu for example an obstructed uh, urinary catheter due to precipitation of urinary sludge or crystal or debris even catheter kinking is common okay which uh, which can uh, be a very common thing and it sometimes goes unrecognized and the nurse informs you uh, of sudden anuria or unexplained sympathetic response on the monitor and that alerts you the possibility of a post renal AKI finally I would say you must search for uh, causes extensively in your diagnostic workup. Pathologies coexist. Several studies have demonstrated that a tubular damage may be present in patients with prerenal AKI, and that is the reason why the current consensus proposed to differentiate functional AKI and uh, tubular damage, and not a traditional etiological terms like prerenal, postrenal, and renal. So that's all for today. I think I have made my points today. I hope I have made this video very simple and very clear. Do share it with your academic friends. We share so many funny videos, right? Can't we share something which can save the lives of critical patients? Moreover, you will find them very useful. Okay, so you can find uh, the useful references in the link with this video. Thank you so much.